So to remove our lower unit, there's four bolts that hold on. We can see that we already started taking one of them out here, and there's two more on the opposite side. And then the other way it's connected is via our shift rod. So we have this connection here with this little nut, uh, that long nut that's elongated there, and then this small black plastic part that prevents that nut from unturning uh, accidentally, and then that top nut as well that prevents that nut from spinning accidentally. So we're gonna wanna first go ahead and disconnect that shift rod there. We'll take a small Phillips or medium-sized Phillips head. We'll hold the back side there. Once we undo that, we can just spread it apart and pop that little black plastic piece off. We would take two little wrenches and break free these two nuts and then spin it off. Now our shift rod is separated. So now that our shift rod is disconnected, we can go ahead and take out our last uh, remaining two bolts here. If these bolts are a little frozen in place, you'd use a little PB blaster to try to break them free. A little 10 millimeter bolts. We'll take our extension there. Get our ratchet to break that free. You're gonna support the lower unit weight with your knee as you back up this last bolt. Pull that out there. The whole lower unit will just drop down freely. It might take a little jiggling at first just to break the seal around that. If it's frozen in place, you could take a dead blow hammer or uh, a two by four and a regular hammer, place a two by four against here and then tap, try to break it free. It'll slide down. Before we get it too far out, we're gonna wanna remove this long nut here off our shift rod. So it'll have to drop through freely. There we go. And there we are, our lower unit is free. And we're looking at the top of the water pump there. Just to identify a few objects here, we have our shift rod that selects our gear, we have our drive shaft, and we have our water pump housing. The water pump intake down there flows water up through here, goes around the impeller, and then spews it through this top little black grommet. And that little black grommet lines up with a pipe on the inside of our lower unit. You can see that little brass pipe that that grommet slides over top of. So, to disassemble this, we're gonna go ahead and just break free our four bolts around our water pump housing. So to give you a little bit of background information here, this is our shift rod that goes down to a little cam. The cam is kind of like the end of these needle nose pliers here. And as you push that shift rod down in there, it slides a rod that's connected to the, uh, the drivetrain side here, either forward, back, or back even further. So all the way forward is forward gear, in the middle is neutral, and all the way back is reverse gear. So that's how you select either reverse, neutral, or forward. As we're replacing the water pump, there's no need to remove our shift rod. We do not want to undo that bolt. If you undo that bolt, the whole rod will come out along with the cam attached to the bottom of it. And it's kind of tricky to get back in there as well as uh, all your lower unit fluid could drain out through that hole. So just these four bolts, we've got them all loose now. But as we remove the water pump housing, just in case our water pump is still good, our impeller is still good and we're just inspecting it and we're not replacing it totally, we're gonna to want to go ahead and rotate our drive shaft just a little bit. We'll make sure we select neutral here on our shift rod. So now we're still in gear. Up just one there. Now we're in neutral. So we'll just rotate our drive shaft normally and wiggle our water pump housing on up. And there we go. So we've got our gasket there. It looks like it's a little torn, can be replaced. We've got our water pump housing with the uh, metal bell housing inside there. We have our impeller that is attached on there. We'll just wiggle that up. Our impeller, this one's brand new, so it looks great. Oftentimes you'll find these and they will have, uh, they'll have no fins left on them. They'll just be nothing but that little round uh, rubber piece in the middle. All the fins will be broken off. And typically the fins fall down inside of your little intake screen down inside there. You wanna get those fins out. That's the most important part is to 
if you're missing fins, if you got, if you see maybe just one left and you're missing five, find the other five before you put all this back together. You don't want one fin getting stuck somewhere in the system and blocking water flow. Another important thing to note is our key, or our impeller key is this little uh, metal uh, piece right here. So this little impeller key is what keeps the uh, impeller from just spinning around the round drive shaft. So we don't want to lose this little guy here. We want to make sure we uh, put some more safe. And so we've got our intake where our water flows up through and then comes into that little section right there. You can see it gets let in right through there and it gets pulled up by the impeller. So to install a new impeller, we would first take our impeller key, maybe a little bit of grease on it so it would stick in place. We'll line it up right there. A little bit of normal marine all-purpose grease works great. We'll take our impeller, slide that down gently over the drive shaft. Line up the little indent on the impeller with the key. Push right down on top. And then we'll go ahead and get our impeller or water pump housing. Normally uh, we would replace gaskets and things like that, but since this is brand new, there's really no need to. We'll go ahead and slide this down over the top. And one important thing to note here is when you get to this part and you're trying to get the impeller back inside the housing, the impeller is slightly bigger than the housing, so it forms a nice tight seal with the edges there. So you're going to want to maybe use some soapy water as a lubricant so you don't hurt the brand new impeller and gently rotate the drive shaft while you slowly work the water pump housing down. Just wiggle it around, get everything lined up perfect. Then we can go ahead and snug down our screws. Now that everything is just finger tight, we'll go ahead and take our ratchet and we'll tighten everything in a crisscross pattern. So we'll do corners, then the opposite corner. That'll help pull the water pump down evenly. And there we go. So we got a brand new impeller in. We'll probably use a little bit of marine grease or a little soap and water on this little rubber spot. Without soap and water, if you got nothing else, a little bit of saliva works. Just keep that uh, kind of wet there so you can slide it up over the, uh, the water pump pipe nice and easily. And we'll go ahead, we'll put it into uh, reverse gear. So we'll push all the way down and just rotate our prop there a little bit by hand. Slides in reverse nice and easy. That just gives us more room to work with with the shift rod there. We'll go ahead and uh, reinstall our uh, lower unit onto the motor. So we'll try to line up our drive shaft inside there, line up our shift rod on the front there. Once we've got that in, and then why it's important to have the motor in or the lower unit in gear in reverse is the drive shaft splines may not line up perfectly with the splines in the crankshaft. So you'll be able to rotate the propeller a little bit to line it up the rest of the way uh, so that the drive shaft slips in nice and easy. We'll make sure we get our little rubber boot there lined up with our water pipe before we push too hard. Everything is lined up. We'll rotate our drive shaft a little bit. And perfect, slides right into place. Now that's all the way up there, we'll go ahead, we'll get a bolt here to hold it in place for us. There we go, we got that finger tight. We'll go ahead and install the other three and then go sequentially corner by corner and tighten everything down. Once it's nice and snug and evenly tightened, then we'll go ahead and reconnect our shift rod. And so this is where the tricky part comes into play. Now we need to reconnect our shift rod with our lower unit. We have the lower unit in reverse. If you remember, we put it into reverse gear uh, as we slid it up. So that's the shift rod as far down as it'll go. So we'll reach over to our tiller and we'll, uh, we can see that's forward there. We're gonna put it to neutral and then all the way to reverse. So we're gonna get the handle in reverse as well as the lower unit in reverse. And now we're gonna wanna connect these two together. So we're just gonna spiral up and you can see there's a little bit of free play there. So that's where the the artistic part comes into play. You'll wanna get it lined up the best you can with really no tension either way, pulling or pulling, uh, pulling or tugging. And once you get it connected, you can slide that nut up into place there. Get about half of the, this long nut on the top, half on the bottom. Then we can secure it right into place by tightening those two together. So we'll grab, uh, looks like about two eight millimeter wrenches. Slide our little black plastic clip on. Can reinstall our screw. And just 
is finger tight since uh, you are putting a metal screw into plastic, it'll strip out fairly easily. Everything else is nice and snug. We've got our two nuts tight. That's tight there, so that's not going to disconnect at all. We're going to test this out. There's neutral, forward. You can just check. Yep, that's forward. Back into neutral. Perfect, there's neutral. And now we'll go down into reverse. There's reverse. Very good. So, seems like our motor's shifting nice and smoothly. Now, really important to go out and water test this at nice slow speed and make sure it shifts cleanly, that it's not uh, going into forward too quickly or going into reverse too quickly either way. Um, it's fully engaging. If you hear a lot of clicking either way, then um, it might possibly be misadjusted, either uh, going into gear too soon or too uh, late. You want it to be pretty equal. So, and how you would, in case it is misadjusted, is you just come back to this uh, long nut here and you would change the distance between the shafts. You'd either pull the shafts closer together or further apart before you join them together with that nut. So um, any questions on there, either leave it in the comments or uh, shoot us a note on our website. Hopefully you found this helpful and uh, you're able to replace your own water pump on your own motor now. Save yourself some money from uh, taking it to the dealership. Until next time, good luck. Thanks for watching.